What's going on everyone? Today we're going to be going on a little road trip. Um, every now and then I just like to get out, go for a nice quiet drive, no music. Just kind of see the sights and um, I've taken this route that uh, I'm taking today. I've taken it many times before when I used to have my motorcycle. I used to like to ride it. Um, so I'm starting off here in Groton, Massachusetts, and we're going to kind of take a path through uh, back roads of north central Massachusetts and then through south central New Hampshire and then maybe into Vermont, depending on how far we go. So this is Route 119 in the center of Groton, which I'll spin you around and show you what's going on here. And um, we're just going to follow this west and bring us through Pepperell for a minute, um, Townsend, Ashby, Ashburnham, and then we get into the um, into New Hampshire, the New Hampshire towns. After that, a lot of cool things along the way, some neat little towns and some spots to see. So, uh, yeah, let me show you where we're at. So this is kind of the center of Groton. If you go that way, you get to uh, Acton, which is where 119, Route 119 starts. This is Route 119. Just over there is uh, Gibbet Hill and Bancroft Castle, which I did a video on a month or so ago. And then that's Route 119 heading that way. Here we go. I've got everything I need here. I've got coffee, water, more coffee, peanut butter sandwiches, cigars, extra camera, sunglasses in case the sun decides it's gonna come out. About 10 minutes up the road from where I just was. Uh, I'm in towns in Massachusetts now. I'm in this, where is it? A little church parking lot old church i think it's the um the town historical building there's a there's a construction trailer there so looks like they're doing renovations since the last time i was out here this nice little pond here parking for this is in the little church parking lot it's open to the public I've taken my kayak, like, I've taken my kayak out here in the past. This pond kind of right out there kind of hooks around those trees to the, to the left. So you can go for quite a ways. It's really nice, quiet. Anytime I've come out here, I've only ever run into a couple people. I met a guy that was out here fishing one time and he uh, he told me that there's some some eagles that nest over there but I've never seen them that would be pretty cool there's a nice rail trail that comes right through here and also you can walk out walk out over there brings you out kind of onto the other side of the pond and then the rail trail continues this way. You can see remnants of the old tracks. It's more prominent the farther you go. If you follow this, it leads you to, there's like a dam and an antique store over there and an old train bridge. Actually, I'll just take a little walk. See the old tracks, all the ties are still here. I wish that a lot of times with these trails they would keep it like this. You can see this house is right here. Imagine train rumbling through with your house right there. Here's a little train bridge I was talking about. Let's see where it crosses the road. Water goes under the road over there. There's a little waterfall just kind of drops off right there.
see that over there? The grist mill and the cooperage. Some nice little bench out here. I don't know if you can see that. It says the Harbor Kids Swimming Hole. There's a different view. I'm not even sure the name of this pond or lake, whatever it is. That's a historical house over there. I'm going to go see what the sign says. The Reed Homestead, 1809, Townsend Historical Society. Man, like I was saying, imagine, and this is Route 119 right here, but yeah, imagine that's your house, and I mean, there's the tracks right there. I mean, that thing must have sounded like it was going to come through your house. This is called the Squanacook River Rail Trail. It's 1.8 miles west, which is that way, to Townsend Center, which is where we're heading. Made it here to Townsend Center. It's a nice little park here. We got this gazebo. Smile, you're on camera. Well, you smile because you're on camera. One thing that's pretty consistent through all these old New England towns is brick buildings. As you can see these everywhere. And I like it. Down there you got some gas stations, family dollar, a donut shop. You got a flag and got this statue here in commemoration of the men of Townsend who served their country on land and sea in the war for the Union, 1861-1865. Monument erected 1932 under the provision of the will of John Burney Blood, 53rd Regiment Mass Volunteer Infantry. Interesting. So, if I'm reading that right, that gentleman left uh, the funds for that in his will to be built here in Townsend Center. This old building, Evans. Clothing. It says clothing footwear, but look at that giant boot over there. The sign says Old Schoolhouse, 1871. Man, that boot is huge. Look how cool this building is. So this is the town hall. I don't know what the history is. Must have been something back in the day. Looks like there's some kind of sign over here, but the cannons. This building here must have been a bank way back when, with that big alarm there. What's that say? Bankers Electric Protective Association. Boston, New York. There's another, another old brick building over there. Wonder what that was. Check out this old place. The old brick store, cold beer and wine. The old polar ginger ale sign. That's crazy. Polar ginger ale is in, based out of Worcester, I think. Groceries, beer, and wine. More brick buildings over there. Hobart Village Mall Antiques. More antique stuff. Everything's pretty closed up today. And uh, that's heading west, which is the way we're going to continue. You know, standing here looking at this, I'm willing to bet that 
that house is where the owner of this store lived. All right, we're out of Townsend Center. We're just entering Willard Brook State Park. We're out in the woods now. There's not much for a few miles. I'm now in Ashby, Massachusetts at Willard Brook State Park. Um, the direction I was heading, heading west, it starts in Townsend and then quickly you get into Ashby. I just pulled over the side of the road here at Damon Pond. There's the road right there. So east is that way, west is that way, which is the direction where this is where we came from. That's where we're heading. And here is what they call Damon Pond. And it sounds like there's some waterfalls over here. Here's the pond. The water comes right down there. It drops off under the bridge. And check this out. That's awesome. Pull a covered walking bridge down there. I might see if I can get down there. I don't really know how, but I'm gonna try. There's more water being fed from up the hill coming down that way. This is where I just was. How awesome is this? Look at this. The water is raging under the covered bridge. It's very muddy down here. Good thing I have my boots on. Yeah. This is awesome. I love stuff like this. I love stuff like this so much. Especially when there's nobody out here. I'm the only one out here. There's another car up in the parking lot, but I, I haven't seen them. This is awesome. Look at this. They got a little place to cook over a fire. A picnic table right here on the water. I might make it a point to get out here and just hang out for half a day um, while it's still cool before peak season. Just have this place to myself. There's all kinds of picnic tables out here. Every everyone has like one of these little fire um, boxes. This area says do not enter. But I'm just gonna see what it is. It looks pretty cool. It's like a little gazebo area. The Richmond Tramp House. cool is that? Built 1914, restored in 2015. This one-room dwelling housed many tramps who passed through town during the first half of the 20th century. Severe economic conditions and high unemployment caused hundreds of thousands of people to take to the roads and railroads seeking work, handouts, food, and shelter. Many towns built simple one-room hostels where these vagrants were given a free meal and a bed before being urged to move on. Richmond Tramp House, one of only a few remaining in the state of New Hampshire, serves as a mini museum recalling a significant era in Richmond's history and culture. I don't know if you can see in there, there's a little wood stove bench. And it's sort of, it's hard to see because it's at an angle, but off to the left there, that little red post is like a little bunk bed. 
That's pretty cool. I never even knew such a thing existed. Tramp house. <laughs> All right, and then right across the street, we got the Richmond Library and Fire Department. And that other small building up there says that's their municipal building. To, so to give you an idea of the size of this town, that building is their municipal building. I'm in Winchester, New Hampshire, which I believe is the last town in New Hampshire before crossover into Vermont. I don't really know what the history of this town is, but it must have been something back in the day because based on the buildings, it looks like this was a, uh, this was like a bustling area. Got all these, what must have been shops at one point. There's sort of the main intersection church over there I don't know what that I wonder what that small building is over there so that is the Ashwalot River it feeds into the Connecticut River which is what separates uh, Massachusetts uh, New Hampshire and Vermont here on Route 119 then like look down here this is the library Looks like some sort of armory. Probably was back in the day. Cool looking town center, not much going on right now. Just pulled over here in Ashwalot, New Hampshire. So I guess Winchester wasn't the last town before the border. Going up the river here and check this. One lane covered bridge, old wooden bridge, still in use. I think I can walk across here. I'm gonna go check it out now and see. This is the Ashwalot Covered Bridge, New Hampshire Covered Bridge number one. Huh. Interesting. Let's see if I can get across this thing. Oh yeah, look at this. This is where the cars drive. Just wide enough for one car, so before you get on the bridge, you gotta make sure there's nobody coming in the other direction. All wooden construction. See down through there, the water flowing. This is awesome. I don't know what that is. That's a cool looking building. There's private property signs all over the place, so I am not gonna go see what it is. <laughs> Ashwalot Covered Bridge. $5 fine for riding or driving over this bridge faster than a walk. <laughs> There's the view across the bridge and I'm going to walk down the other side. Just as I was getting off the bridge, a vehicle came across. You could feel it shaking. Look, here comes a truck. Ready? See if you can hear it as it rumbles over. Oh, I can definitely, <laughs> I can definitely feel it shaking. That guy was driving faster than I'm walking. Wonder if I should go find him five dollars. And that's the view heading west, which again is the direction we're heading. And so is the water looking town looks like there was something going on at one point all the houses on the right and on the left 
just passed a couple of dilapidated buildings right on the river. And it looks like we're coming up in the center of town. We've got town hall. And just like that, we are entering Brattleboro, Vermont. Here I am. Brattleboro, Vermont, the end of Route 119. Just crossed over the Connecticut River right here along the railroad tracks. I'll spin you around and show you this little section of Brattleboro before I turn around and head back. If anyone's ever in the northern central Massachusetts area, south central New Hampshire, Take the drive. This is great. Goes from Acton, Massachusetts, all the way here to Brattleboro. I picked up Route 119 from Groton, Massachusetts. If you just want to make the drive, it's a great drive. I've done that a couple times on my motorcycle, where I've just come out here, stopped here in Brattleboro, had some lunch. There's a bunch of restaurants and stuff to do here, and then turned around and went back. Um, or you know, there's tons of things to do if you want to stop along the way, even more than what I've shown. There's all kinds of walking paths along rivers and marshland and ponds and lakes and all that stuff. There's other state parks that I went past that I, that I didn't have time to show. Let me show you a little bit of Brattleboro. I'm here in the parking lot of the Whetstone Beer Company. Just crossed over the river there. Some train tracks. I don't know if these are active or not. And there's a sign there. Right there. Welcome to Brattleboro. Got some old factory buildings. Train tracks down there. If you go up to those lights and take a right, that brings you kind of into the downtown Brattleboro area. That's going to do it for this one. Slid up a cigar for their drive home. Just going to enjoy the cigar and the scenery on the way home. Uh, thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.